Steve, how are we doing? I've been looking at Los Silis last week and music in the style of, not looking to copy because I'm not interested in copying. I wanted to take his production styles, look at what he does, analyze his techniques, and then go forth and create a track. Uh, so I'll just get straight into it. Here's the whole process. And please let us know any comments or anything like that. Any improvements or that, I'd actually really like to know as well. Uh, just down in the comments below. Thanks very much. Enjoy. So to get the beginning of the album, I set off on a little bit of a research project. I looked at what Lossil does in terms of his music and what he did in terms of creating Endless Falls. Uh, first step was to lie on the floor, totally chill out and listen to the album. Just take it in and really absorb what's going on with it. And it is, it's a very emotional feeling album. It really is that sort of melancholy um, stuff I really love that sort of deep ambient melancholy so it's about the depth of the sonic um, rain plays a really big part in the album so I've used rain quite a bit in it and even though he's more partial to sort of granular processing and convolution is a big thing that he uses I didn't really get enough time to do that I think because I've been away this week so um, I would like to actually take this now and resample and use a granulator or some type of granular synthesis on this or use convolution on it to just try and get a bit more of out of the sound, try and change the sound a little bit. I think the main thing I looked at was organising the library of sounds before I started. That was a big thing for me. And also the rain drone, I decided to use a resonator on that with a lot of background reverb with a really big long reverb and we're talking about lo-fi processing as well so these are three big things that I took you can download this off the um, link underneath in the description so if you want to kind of take these principles and go with them feel free so moving into the track I'm going to give you a little sample of a section uh, I'll just play it very shortly and then what I'll do at the end is I'm going to play the whole track and just let the whole thing close out with it so you can hear. gives you enough to go on and then we'll just run through everything that I've done. The first thing I'm going to look at is the kick drum and this is incredibly simple. This is called kick deep. It's actually one of the generic kicks you get with Ableton and all I've done is put a production curve on it. So if I solo that, it's very deep. I've taken the top end off. And you'll see in here, I've put the Berlin delay and a little bit just to tie it in of the reverb. Berlin delay is very simple. I went through it in the uh, Mix and Master template video. The delay is a Valhalla. You can see I've got a 21 second decay time on it. That's the big verb and we've got a giant verb which has got a 49.65 second delay on it. They're both exactly the same reverb, but I wanted a much bigger and longer tail for the pad sounds, which I'll go through in a little bit. Uh, this, I didn't actually use this reverb, and then this one is just a straight eighth note echo. Very, very simple and straightforward, which I wanted for one of the tracks. So likewise on these hits, I've got three things which I sampled and I put into a drum rack. I've got hitting a vase, another hit on a vase, and another hit on a vase. So I've just split these out to make the rhythm track on this. So you'll see the solo that. And I've got the different hits hitting at different times. Just made a 16 bar pattern, so we've got a little bit of variation going on with it. Now all I've got with that is I've EQ'd off the low end and I've got a phaser follower which is one of the generic plugins. I wanted to warm it up a little bit so I added the, um, the saturator to it and then I've got three different echoes because I wanted to have quite a big 
I wanted it to do some unpredictable things as the echoes panned out. So you can see the two Ableton echoes, you've got a quarter note, half note, and then the Echo Boy from Sound Toys with a half note echo on it as well. And again, just to finish off on that EQ there, just to accentuate a little bit of the top end because I felt it was a little bit light on the top end. And then both of those are going to the drum bus. And in there, all I've got is warm tube just to try and tie them together a little bit and the glue compressor. Now, moving on to the bass, I went up with a single bass sound, which is... Fairly simple, straightforward bass sound, but I felt like I didn't need to do much to it to tie it in. So I've just got a sine wave and a sawtooth in wavetable. Rolling off a little bit at the bottom end, just again, just to take away a bit more. And then we go to the bass bus. I've got the bit warmer preset with the saturator just to add a little bit to it. And then the glue compressor again. And then into the keys, I've got piano sound on this, or just on the bass actually. I added a little bit of the big reverb, just to help put it into a bit of context with all the other things, and the straight eight note there for the echo. Moving on to the piano, I've just used Grand Piano Equal Bright Production, which is one of the Ableton presets. Not really done an awful lot to that. And then I've used the around the head on the auto pan um, just to place that in different spaces when it's playing. And in terms of channel strip, I've just taken a little bit of the low end noise off it just so it doesn't compete with other things. Now I've gone again on that with the delay and I've put a little bit more just to set the piano back, I should have a touch more, just to set it back in the mix a little bit so when you hear the notes playing. You can hear that delay. But it's just pushed back in the mix. I just wanted it to sort of sit quite far back. Then I've got a xylophone which only plays a tiny few little bits. And this is using the Ableton Resonator, which will play. And I put a little bit of saturation. And then this is a grit thing which I created for this, which has got a bit of noise, a bit of hiss. We're knocking the bit rate down and sample rate, taking out a little bit of the EQ. And I've added a little bit of width to this using the utility and some echo on it. And then the production channel strip, just taking the bottom and top end off it there and leveling. So again, just to finish out the keys, I've got this high bell sound, which... Now I'm using Reason Rat plugin, I'll go into that, but I've just got a one of the convolution reverb standards. And again, I've got this grit chain that I've put in there before it goes into the bus. Now this keys bus has got nothing in it. So because I've treated everything separately within the keys, I didn't want to add anything more than just the glue compressor just to sort of bigger the sound up a little bit. So when I go into the high bell, I'll show you what I've done in reason. A bell sound using subtractor. Then I've got reverb on it. I've got another bell sound in the NNXT. Now you can see that these are actually presets as well, so I haven't really done anything to this. And then I've added some depth and width with the Polar dual pitch shifter. Now moving on to the strings. So I did quite a lot with the strings because I quite liked, uh, there was a lot of deep string sounds. I think it was using the cello um, in the pieces done by Los Sill. So I really like the idea of this noisy string quartet. So you'll see I haven't particularly got anything on there, but if we go into the strings bus, you can see I've got this grit preset. So that is every single one of these strings is going into that bus and getting trapped by that grit preset just to give it that little edginess. So if I go into the soft note one as well. Now, if I take grit off it, Just has that noise and a little bit of subtle effect to it to give it something else. 
So the quartet is actually a Reason Rack plugin. So I'm using String Work in Reason and I've got it going through the Audiomatic because it just adds a little bit of extra grit to it. Just something else to make it a little bit noisy and give it some depth and texture. And again on here, got pretty much full on the delay and I've just noticed I need to actually add a little bit. So on the big verb, I'm gonna set these back in the mix and we just need to do the same with a soft note. I think the soft note can go a little bit further back and we want that quartet to be a little bit closer to us. So if we play that now. There we go, and then the soft note. Great, so that soft note is a single note sampled from the string quartet and put into a simpler. And you can see I've added noise to it. So even though it's going through the grip plugin, I've added a little bit more noise to it. I've added the double ether preset on the phaser flanger, a little bit of noise there and going through the EQ. And then I've got pizzicato, which just creeps up every now and then in the arrangement, which is going through that, uh, that bus for the um, grit and we're not really doing anything else apart from a little bit of EQ into it. I've got a string loop, which is again, just a sample of strings, but you can see what I did here, gently falling, it was just a little bit of playing around with some different chords. And that's not doing an awful lot there, but it's got already got that a little bit of grit in the sample, and then I'm adding a bit more sample by putting it through grit on the pad bus. So the noise pad is just using two Ableton Wave tables, and you can see we've got white noise, and then basic sound shapes. So this is the real big noise of it. I've got the unison noise on it, and then I've got some pretty much just off sawtooth waves here, just giving it a little bit more, but also going through the unison noise, which gives it a really ethereal quality. It's got a beautiful sound, and because I've got quite a lot of reverb on that, I've got that turned up pretty much full on the big verb, and it sounds really ethereal, I think. Just using that word again, pushes it out there as well. On the string bus as well, for all of those things, I've got that pushed out a little bit. So if we go at the end of the chain, you can see I've just got 115% width. So all of those strings are being pushed out a little bit because what I've got next on the pads, I've got these rain pads and you can see that at the end here, I've pushed that out to 123%. And then in the pad bus, I've got it again, the width getting pushed out a little bit more. So if we listen to this first rain pad soloed, You see both of the rain pads have got heavy use of the giant verb, which has got that 40 odd second delay. But you can hear that sort of pseudo pushing it really out to the edges. So it goes out to the edges, it creates a lot of depth and width, and it also allows the other things to breathe within. So it gives, it gives a lot more space within the mix for the other elements to play around in. Let's go over a little bit what I did with the rain pads. So I used the resonator on these and I used a very simple rain patch. So if I turn that off. That's a rain sound that I made because I also do music and sounds for tinnitus. So this is a rain sound that I made to actually cover the whole frequency spectrum. So I wanted that to be really bright and broad and have something going on all over the frequency. So I felt like that worked really nicely. And when you put that drone resonator on, on this one, I just use a bit of chorus, just give it a bit of width and the resonators. It's a D sharp. I've used the fourth of D sharp. I've used the fifth of D sharp and then an octave. On the other pad, I've used the third, so the minor, uh, the minor third. I've used the seventh, which is the, the, uh, the major fifth, which gives us the minor chord. I've used plus 12 and I've also used plus 15, which is that minor third up an octave. So it's a slightly different feel to the resonator. And then I've also, on the EQ, just absolutely narrowed in on the bands that I want it to do. 
And if we go to the other one, I've given that a slightly wider bang, so I wanted a little bit more high frequency. So I wanted that to kind of have a, a different feel to it, but not too much out there. So this pad here was actually the first thing that I did. So I, I wanted to get a certain sound, and these were the first two notes that I played around with that kind of began the whole creation of the piece itself. Let me see what I've done here. That's the resampled one. This is the original. So I've just changed the texture of it, mixed the two together. And they're going through Crush Texturizer, which is a generic preset for the pulverizer. I often try and make my own presets, but I think in cases of effects like this, it's just no point because they've got some really, really nice sounding presets as it is. And then finally, you've got to look at the synth. So this Wobble Echo synth. Using the Ableton Arpeggiator wavetable again, you can see I've got sines, harmonics, and just a basic shape for a triangle wave. And then I do have two Sound Toys plugins. I've got the Micro Shift just in a little bit there. And then the Echo Boy, given the echo that you can hear. Rolled the bottom end off, rolled off the bottom end on the EQ. Then I've used the production channel strip curve, but I've just knocked 3dB out at the three places. Just wanted to take that little bit. It sounded better with it on, so I kind of did a lot of AB in with the other ones. And on this other synth, very, very basic. It's just a sine wave in operator. With a bit of delay, I've got the EQ knocking off the bottom end because operator is very noisy in the... Uh, Actually. You always get that real bottom end on the uh, the note on on the operator, so I always like to knock it off. Uh, and I've used the production strip again, but this time I've kept it with a 6 dB rolled off it, just so it plays better with the other synth on it when the two of them are playing. So, in terms of the arrangement, I've gone for a very, very minimal thing and really centred around the two chords. So that kind of thematically plays throughout and then we get to the end. So that semitone drop there is kind of an integral part of how everything was built and how it all sort of glues together across the course of it. So what I tried to do is kind of bring themes in and out, try and kind of bring it up and then ease it back down again. Um, so I'm going to close out by playing the whole thing. Um, anything, ask us anything about this. I'm also really keen to get criticism, so if you hear it and there's things that actually say that doesn't quite work there, I think you should do this here, please let us know in the comments because I'm happy to change anything. For me, this is all a learning process, so it's great to be able to get other people's opinions on it. And I think trying to do it in a week as well makes it a little bit more difficult because you kind of don't have that ability to step away and reassess your music because you've gotten work into a tight time scale forces you into an arrangement, which is good and bad, obviously. You know, it's it's great to have tight time scales, but it also does kind of prevent you a little bit from just taking that overview and being able to walk away from it and come back and listen and go, no, that needs to be there. That needs to be there. I'll close out now playing that. Like, subscribe, all that sort of thing, please. It'd be lovely to see you next week where I'm going to be looking in depth at... Am I... Ableton Wavetable. I'm going to be looking in depth at Ableton Wavetable. So I'm going to create a whole track using only Wavetable, but with the idea that I'm going to get to use every single feature in Wavetable to do a kind of showcase of everything you can do with it. So hopefully that works out well. We'll see. Uh, but catch you next week, and uh, here we go.